What is the man? No man. But if you read carefully, they said that they found her in the very act. Where is the man? Which means this is not a rumor. Like somebody said to somebody, somebody told somebody. No, this is they found her in the very act. But there is no man. So if there is a man, that means they let him go. That means they are corrupt, they are false. They are not really what they claim to be, rabbis or religious. They don't care for the law of Moses. They are practicing their own law. They are using the law for their own purpose. They brought a victim so they can reach into the point of a trap. It's like, you know, you want to hunt the wolf. What do you do? You tie a chicken with a rope. You wait for the wolf to come. But in this scenario here, they are the wolves. And they use this poor woman as a trap for their own agenda. So in life, John 8, we did not continue, present many things about us. I can find in every line something about me and something about you. Jesus went into the Mount of Olive. You know, olive have something very special in the Bible. It's mentioned as a medicine. It's used as a for ritual. It have a very very special meaning. Why Jesus went to the Mount of Olives? There is a places in our life is connected to us. The Mount of Olive is connected to Jesus. Where is your Mount of Olive? It might be a place, it might be a person, it might be something lovely to you. So you will find that in Jesus going somewhere, something teaching you that if you want to be in the Mount of Olive, you better go there. It's not going to come to you. So if there's a lovely place, if there's a lovely person, if there's a lovely family, if there's a lovely target you have in your life, you better walk to it. Otherwise, that thing will not come to you. And that is Jesus. He is going there to teach. Maybe you are the person who will go there to learn. So you might be the teacher, but you might be the student. But you might be the farmer. There's many people there in the olive of oil mounts. There's people who they are taking care of the tree. There's the farmer. There's the villager. There's the one who is sitting under the shade. There's the one who's coming to listen to Jesus. And there's the one who is going maybe to make a paint about the Mount of Olive. It's beautiful. Each one of us, he have a Mount of Olive in his life. But it's only you who can find it. So we will notice here in the story that everything about this story, even though it is 2,000 years ago, it presents something can be touching to me. I can be the Pharisee. I lecture people about how to be good, but maybe I do the more ugly stuff you can imagine. I can be wearing a uniform of a priest, speaking about how good I am and how we should be good, but behind the doors maybe is a child molester. Every verse you see in front of you, it have to do with your life. Not only with Jesus. So when Jesus said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now, this is a verse, is the heart of the story. Who agree with me? 
that this is the heart of the story. What do you think? Is it the heart of the story? Does it touch you? Does it affect you? Do you use it a lot? I say that yes, this is the heart of the story, but the story is not over. The story is not over. Because I can say, you can say the same sentence to me. I can say the same sentence to you. But if I could not make you feel in shame, that sentence mean nothing to you, mean nothing to me. So obviously when Jesus said that sentence, he was able to do something very special. Remember, those people are hypocrites anyway. They brought a woman without a man, accusing her of the, of the very act, and they are coming to test Jesus, to tempt Jesus, to see what he would do, so they can go after him, not after the women. And now Jesus, he said to them, if any of you without a sin, cast your first stone. So what the heart of the story like what is the the, the, the the blast of the heart like boom 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 like what is what is the what we learn from here? Anyone notice? The first thing you learn that you should be smart and wise, not just a person who caught a sentence. You caught the sentence when the sentence is required. You say a word when the word is going to be effective. They wanted to tempt him, remember. And now Jesus being tempted, he being tried. If Jesus says a stone her, ah, well, now we know that he is going to follow the law. He is not a special, he is just doing, you know, he is just a follower. The first thing you learn that you should be smart and wise. Not just a person who caught a sentence. You caught the sentence when the sentence is required. You say a word when the word is going to be effective. They wanted to tempt him, remember. And now Jesus being tempted, he being tried. If Jesus says a stone her, ah, well, now we know that he is going to follow the law. He is not a special, he is just doing, you know, he is just a follower. But Jesus here, he showed how wisdom can solve big problems. How wisdom can be used for mercy. How wisdom can be used to expose liars. How wisdom can be used to touch the heart, even between those liars, to feel ashamed of himself. So when he said to them, the one without a stone, without sin, cast your stone, he did many things. He showed them that they are hypocrite. He showed them that they have, a, you know, he shamed them. And he showed them wisdom, that you aren't qualified. You yourself, you are the last one to be qualified to cast your sin, your stone. You yourself is corrupt. So how you can be the judge? And how you can be the one who carried the law when you are the thief? When you are the hypocrite? So you will notice, the more you read, the more you feel something about you. Many people, they see that this is a verse here showing the mercy and the love of Jesus for giving that woman. 
When Jesus had lifted up himself and he saw none but the women, he said unto her, Women, where are those thine accuse, accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Jesus says to her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And here you notice the hypocrite one of us. He will take the sentence which we call it the heart of the story. The one who don't have sin cast your first stone. But they will not remember that Jesus says, Go and sin no more. Are you with me? So if I am a fornicator, I will remember only the first part of the story. Jesus said, the one who don't have a sin, cast your first stone. Hey, you cannot judge me. I can do whatever I want. So I take that part and I say, you know, Jesus, he forgive me for doing, but no, 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 no. Jesus, he just gave her a chance. One chance. She take it or she leave it. Go and sin no more. And many time, us, we are given one more chance. But time will come, and then you go to sleep, and then you don't wake up, and all your chance are gone. The Lord, he told you, go and sin no more. He saved you from the execution. He saved you from the judgment. He saved you from the Pharisees. And he told you what you should do. Go and sin no more. So if I say to you, there's one verse in the Bible, touch me, I say every verse touch me. Because as you see, everything can be interpretation of my life and your life. Our book is not a tale of stories or a, 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 a book of tales. Excuse my English. My English is not that good. I'm limited with my words. Sometimes I have difficulty really. The Bible is a very deep book. But uh, my English is very limited, so I feel I feel bad actually when I speak about the Bible. This is why I avoid, uh, you know, speaking about it because my language doesn't help me. My ability in English doesn't help me really to explain what I want to say. Like sometimes I stop even like I'm trying to find a word to use, but the words I know is very little. So every verse in the Bible can be your story. And this is why I advise you, when you read the Bible, don't read the Bible. Live the Word of God. Because then you will find yourself there. You will not be reading. You know, once I was teaching, and in the room, there's a big room actually. There's a like a picture, nature. So I ask those guys with me, who can describe, who can, you know, let's take a paper and pen and either you draw this picture or you write. I, I, did, I did that many times actually, because that helped me to understand people in front of me, how they see things and what they see. And you will notice, even though we are looking at the same picture, but each one of us, he sees something else. You know, we don't see the same thing. We don't even describe it in the same way. But all of us, we have eyes. All of us, we are looking from the same distance at the same picture. Why we don't see it in the same way? The answer is very simple. Because each one of us, he live different life. So he see the same image in different way. It's always depend on where you are and who you are. It's always depend where you are coming from. 